Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to go through all the window get commands with you, which are these ones. These commands allow you to get information about the window that you designate. So if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. So let's get started. Now I'm going to go through the win get command last and I'm going to go quickly through the rest of them really quickly because they are very simple so i will start with the winget class and winget class gives you the class name of the window that you specify by providing the win title so a means active window right so that's going to say for example if i run a notepad and quickly shift my focus onto the notepad after having run the script i'm going to get the class name of the notepad window which you can also find from windows spy down here and if I just go ahead and run it and not activate any other window then obviously that's going to get the class name of the Visual Studio Code which is the same as Chrome widget win all right so window get title or win get title is a command that gets the window title of uh, whatever window that you designate so right now as you can see I've got the Visual Studio Code's window title like that you can apply that to other ones as well winget text allows you to get the text values usually from the controls within a window and so to demonstrate I'm going to create a GUI and add three edit controls and show it sleep for two seconds and get the texts that exist within the GUI and then have that displayed out in an output variable in a message box like that. So as you can see in the message box, I've got hi, hello and bye, which are the texts that I have added to these edit controls. And that's what it means by winget text. And as another example, I've got notepad right here. And if I just go ahead and run this now, it's not going to get me anything. But if I type that out, something in the notepad and then render this again that I'm going to be able to get the text that I have added to the notepad window and you can do this with the site window as well so uh, a new site window if I go ahead and run it then I should be able to find new site window right here as well as many other win texts that are added to some controls within the site for auto hotkey this doesn't always work with every single window. And what I mean by that is if I try to run Excel and typed out some value within these cells and then uh, and then try to get the win text. I do get some win text, but these are related to some of the controls within the Excel spreadsheet instead of the value in here. And in my Excel tutorial series, I will be explaining to you how you can uh, play around with Excel and add values and get values out of the Excel. Uh, winget pass is a command that gets the X coordinate, the Y coordinate of a target window as well as the width and the height. So I'm going to rerun this and quickly activate the notepad to get the position and the width and the height of the notepad window. And the first value here is 1031, which represents the X coordinate starting from the left top hand corner of the window and then 258 is the y coordinate 548 is the width 298 is the height this is a information that you can get from windows spy as well and as you can see these values also match the values inside the message box and there's another command called winget active stats this is basically a combination of winget pass and winget active title. There are a couple of ways in AutoHockey that you can use to get the same kind of information. I haven't explained to you what winget active title is, but you can tell from the name of the command, this gets the title of the active window specifically, but this command will get you the title of the window as well as the position of the window and the width and the height but you can simply just use winget title as well as winget position separately as well now moving on to winget winget is a bit of a big command that has a lot of a lot of sub commands so these are the sub commands this is the syntax for winget so i'm going to show you real quickly 
what each one of these do. And so I've got an example down here where I'm going to open up two notepad windows and then I'm going to run winget sub command and that sub command is going to be all of this one by one. So these sub commands match these ones up here. And I won't go into the details of each sub command. You can read this text or you can go to the Autoarchy documentation to find out more about these ones. But in today's video, I'll just quickly verbally go through them with you. And so we're doing a loop pass to go through the list of all the sub commands. And then I'm going to uh, run a winget command to run each of the sub command and get the value displayed in a message box. So if I go ahead and run this, the first thing we're going to have um, is two notepad windows opening and the ID usually when you use the winget command it's going to grab the last activated window so it's going to be this one I think and the ID is the handle to the window so it's this one right here of that target window which is notepad untitled notepad and ID last represents the unique ID number of the last or bottom most window. So uh, this one that I activated second last will be probably the ID last. And then the next one is PID. PID is going to be this one. Let me just double check whether this is the right one. There we go. You can check in Windows Spy that this is the window that we're looking at. And then process name is Notepad EXE. Uh, process path is the path of the notepad executable file. Count means you've got two windows that matches uh, your criteria, order our key notepad.exe. And then list means uh, you've got two when you try to display the output variable. But I'm going to go slightly more into this. That gives you a little bit more detail on how to get the ID of these windows, all of these windows, because with the ID command, you could only get one ID from the matching window. Okay, and min max means is the window maximized or minimized? And that's another thing that I'm going to go into a little bit later. Control list gives you the list of all the controls. So the field that you see here, this field here is edit one. And this one is the status bar uh, that you can bring up down here. So that these two are the controls that you have within Notepad. Um, some other windows will have a lot more controls and control list HWND represents the unique ID given to these controls. So this edit one field will have a, a unique ID. This property status bar will have a unique ID as well. And these are the IDs and transparent is blank. And I will explain that to you a bit later. Trans color is also blank. Again, I'll explain this to you as well. Style and, and extension style are also what I'm going to explain in a little bit. So let's start with the list. List is, like I said, uh, gives you the number of items that match or number of windows that have matched uh, the criteria that you have put in. The criteria being your win title. It could be untitled dash notepad or notepad.exe. So in this example, I'm going to create three instances of notepad and I'm going to use the winget command to get the list of all the IDs of the matching windows. Now it creates a pseudo array, which means the value ID or the variable ID that you put in here will be given the number of IDs, which means the number of matching windows. But if you put in a suffix of number one to whatever number, that you put in, it will give you the unique ID of the matching window for each one of the windows that you have discovered. So ID one is going to give you one of the windows handle to window and ID two is going to give you the next one's handle to window three and so on and so forth. At the end, I'm going to close all three notepad windows. So let's go ahead and run it. And there are four of them because I haven't closed the old one out, I think. It's this one, but let's, let's forget that. And here we'll have three notepad windows. If I press OK, then it's going to loop through these windows or show us the message boxes that give you the unique ID of each of these windows. That's how you get the list of the all the handle to the window for windows that match 
your win title using the win get command. Now min max, like I said, gives you the status of whether uh, the window you're looking at is maximized or minimized or neither maximized or minimized. So I'm going to use the Oraki executable code.exe, uh, which is the Visual Studio Code's process name. And if I go ahead and run this, it's going to grab this windows min max status and then and then display the output like that, which means right now maximize and therefore when min max state is one, which means maximize, it gave us the message box that says maximized. And if I say, for example, unmaximize this and then run this again, then it's going to say neither maximize nor minimized. And that is because it's neither of one or negative one. Negative one means minimize. So let me just minimize both of Visual Studio Code that I have open and put the sleep on because I need to minimize the window and then run it. Then what I'm going to get after three seconds is the minimized message box, which represents a min state of negative one, min max state of negative one. All right. So next up is control list. Control list gives you the list of all the controls that you have in your target window. So again, this time I'm going to create a GUI and add an edit box, a text button and date time and display that in two seconds later, I'm going to get all the, um, the controls within the Oroaki GUI and then display that out in a message box. I think I should use active window because I have Windows Spy open and that might get in the way. So here is the GUI that I created. And because the GUI was activated, I've got the list of all the controls that exist within this GUI. And as you can see, edit one, static one represents text, button represents button, and date time represents this date time pick three to one. And it's this calendar where it allows you to pick a date. So that is um, how you use the control list sub command within Winget. And here is an example of a script that will get you the list of all the controls within a window, as well as their text. So this will be something similar to Winget text, but this time we will get a list of controls and their corresponding texts texts of which you can also get from using the win get text command. So if I run this script that I've just pasted, uh, I'm going to get a tooltip. Actually, I haven't pasted everything um, down here. So including this hotkey right here, and this is going to be uploaded to my website. So you can you'll be able to find it in the relevant entry within my website. And so I have this script running. And right now, because in my Visual Studio Code, there's only one control. And what you see here is the text uh, that is for this control that you see on the left hand side. And I'll probably just go to site because site would have a lot of controls, as you can see. And these are all the controls that you've got. So on the left hand side are the controls on the right hand side are the texts within those controls, which you can get with the win get text command as well. And so you can actually see this changing. Um, if I say, for example, bring up the find field and type something out here. And as you can see, the controls combo box one and edit two have these fields filled out as I typed out the value in there. And that you can do as well with a notepad. So if I type numpad zero to activate or switch on the script again, I'm going to get this uh, tool tip with two items in it. So the edit one and the status. Um, if I type something out here, then you can see the edit one control has its text getting updated as I type out on the notepad. All right. And there are a couple more things that I want to show you, which is so transparent, transcolor style and X style. So transparent, 
uh, basically checks the transparency of the window. So I've got an example here, which opens up the notepad window. It will wait until it opens up and it will set the transparency of that window, the notepad window to 150 and it will sleep for 1000 milliseconds and we'll get the transparency level of the window and display that out, which is going to be 150. So as you can see, the notepad just opened and the transparency has been set to 150 so you can see through it and this is something i'm going to go into a little bit deeper in my next video and the uh, transparency level that we got from using the winget command is also 150 okay trans color on the other hand gives a complete transparency to a given color and i'm going to be using this purple color right here in my example this purple color and that color code, that color's color code is 682178. And you can find that out if you have the window spy and then hover your mouse cursor onto the area that you want to get the color code from. And if you pay attention to this one right here, you will see that the color is right now is different. And that's because I have the yellow circle on my mouse cursor. So if I just go ahead and turned it off then the yellow circle is gone and as you can see if you pay attention to this value here you'll be able to see that uh, the color of this purple bar is 682178a and therefore when I go ahead and run this to set the transparency for this color in the active window my visual studio code this color is going to go away and as you can see it's turned into black but in fact, this is actually transparent. So if I move my notepad window over it and put my focus back on Visual Studio Code, then you will be able to see that the color has turned transparent. And in order to turn the transparency off, you do Winset Transparent off of the active window, then the purple color comes back like that. But I'll go into a bit more detail about this in my next video and winset style allows you to uh, set different styles to a window there's a lot of commands to it um, but i'm just going to show you one today and with this one this is the style code without the caret this is the style code that plays with the maximize button right here so this means toggle so if i go this Carrot means toggle. So if I go ahead and run it, then you can see how the maximize button has been disabled. If I run this again, then it becomes enabled again. So that's the style. That is what is meant by window style. And you've also got X style, uh, which represents the extended style. I don't know why it's called extended style instead of just style. But uh, with this extended style, what you're going to be able to do is also apply different styles to it. And this code gives you um, a style of tool window. What I mean by that is you're just going to be left with the close button on this window, as well as that will go away from the taskbar when I run this. So this notepad window, this icon here is going to go away when I run it. And so as you can see, the minimize button and maximize button gone you're just left with that and the style has changed a bit as well as the notepad has gone away notepad icon has gone away from the task bar so that's what is meant by the extended style in this case all right this is it for today's video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one